everybody, Breath of Fresh Bear here. I am out in my container garden in my garage that I have started and I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys a rundown of all the seeds and stuff that I have and show you some of the first things that I've gotten started. Um, as well as a few experimental type things that we're doing as well, just to try to try some new things out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And just so you guys can see, this is how I plan on doing the starter plants. And you can see here, these are just solo cups and they're about yay far away from the light. You can see there it's about 70 degrees in here right now, just under it's a good starting temp, but I'll get that warmer here. But this right here is just how I'm <clears throat> starting out uh, the seeds, just in solo cups. They're really easy to um, dump the roots out of, and I just make these little cuts right here in the bottom so that the water can drain out of them so the soil doesn't stay super saturated. Right here I've got some black beans, uh, just doing the planting the pantry thing. The black beans will, will grow, pinto beans will grow if you do that. Um, I'm trying a potato from the store, and that's the experiment you see there, to see if I can get that to grow. If it does, I'll transplant that into a much larger container and cover it with a lot more dirt, um, as that's how they do their thing, or I'll just plant more. I've been keeping these potatoes here uh, for a while, letting them dry out to see if I can get them to actually grow as you split them up. Um, I don't know if that'll work or not. We're going to try it out. Um, but then I've got behind that some bush beans. Uh, those are like a green bean type bean. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to try that out and see how that goes. They're supposed to be pretty uh, prolific and you get several harvests off of them. And if I can keep it going through the winter, it'll probably keep going for a long time because it won't die off because of the cold. So that's my thought process anyways. And these are the seeds that I have currently. These are all heirlooms. You can get them from Heaven's Harvest. They're not very expensive. I got most of these in a couple of kits. They're not super expensive, but you can see the cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts there um, because we eat all of those and uh, they're delicious. And we've got beans, corn, and squash. Uh, besides the black beans and pinto beans that I'll be growing, uh, I've got these varieties and I'm waiting to see too whether or not the black beans and the pinto beans are going to be a vining bean or more of a bush bean before because I, uh, I like to plant the corn, the squash, and the beans together because they complement each other very well. Here I've got three different varieties of tomatoes. I've got a tomatillo, which is a good for a green salsa type deal, um, or just green tomatoes, period. That is a green variety of tomato. I've got romas, beef steaks, and then I've got two varieties of peppers. I have a bell pepper and an early jalapeno pepper uh, that are heirloom as well. And then I've got spinach and kale, good, good, good superfoods. They grow fast and they're easy to get good nutrients out of. So those go a long way in making, uh, making up a lot of your, your diet as far as what you need. I've got, uh, let's see here, beets, carrots, onions, two varieties of, I've got a yellow onion and a white onion and then a leek. And I want to try to get a red onion too because they're delicious and everyone loves them. I've got a cilantro, which is good for making salsas. And then I've got pumpkins, cucumbers, and watermelons. I haven't had any luck this year with getting watermelons to even want to germinate. It's been too chilly so far still, uh, which is part of uh, what we'll be talking about here in a little while on my channel. And the fact that uh, just the normal stuff that's going on right now in the weather and the climate the solar minimum and all that stuff, um, it's a cycle that happens, and we've talked about that before. And the cycle that happens is corresponding with seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Um, and it seems to happen pretty often um, as far as math is concerned. You can trace it back to 1700s, 1800s, 1900s. There was all periods of famine uh, because the polar vortex and the solar minimum, it's just the way that got God set it up. I don't know that much about it. I'm trying to do a little bit more research into it, but if we know these things, then we shouldn't be surprised and uh, can adjust our growing seasons accordingly and can watch for things like mildew and uh, different diseases and stuff that'll pop up in crops due to the fact that the UV light's not as abundant, which is one of the reasons why I want to try to do an indoor grow setup as well as an outdoor grow setup to see which one actually produces more crops and fruit because that is... A different way that I can 
kind of control the environment and the climate and what they're exposed to as well. Um, I want to try to do a small hydroponic setup and, and see how that works out, but I'm not sure that I'll have enough time before I have to leave to do that. And I want to get this set up so it's easy for my family to maintain and they can have some crops growing even in the garage throughout the time that I'm gone. So, and I'm teaching my boys to keep up with this stuff as well so that they know what to look for, they know what to do, and it's just good for them as far as schooling is concerned as well to know how to do this stuff. Uh, Hands-on home ec, basically. Um, and we homeschool, so that's a pretty easy thing for me to be able to teach them how to build these things, how to build these racks, how to build uh, the lighting systems, how to wire everything together. And um, yeah, it's just easy for me to teach them with that, especially because they're homeschooled, regardless of whether or not public school is opening in the fall, we still have school. And that's the way it's been for ages. So I'm not really too worried about that, but I am wanting to get started on it and teach them things so that way they know what to do. And uh, potatoes are especially one of the things that I want to grow a ton of because they are the most consumed crop in America and they are very, uh, very easy to grow, especially in buckets. So... There you go. And now we've added a few more things to our planters here. I've got some uh, beefsteak tomatoes there, some watermelons behind it. Pinto beans in the back is again part of our planting our pantry option. Uh, we store pinto beans, so we're gonna grow pinto beans. Um, here we've got, uh, just to see if some commercial popcorn that we got will grow. We've got some popcorn experiment planted there, and we'll see what happens with that. We've got some kale, some spinach, all planted as well. So six more things that we've added to our starters. These are starting everything from seed. All these are heirloom seeds, and we will see what happens here. I haven't had a lot of luck with some of these outside, again, due to the chilly temperatures, but in here... We've got almost 70 degrees, and it's probably not even 60 degrees outside right now. So just having that extra 10 degrees to germinate and get these seeds started might prove to be um, a winning recipe there. Just so you guys can see, I am adding more, and will continue to add more as time goes on here. Mm -hmm.